Okay, we're back here live at Strata Conference. Day two, this is Silicon Angle's exclusive coverage of O'Reilly Media's Strata Conference in Silicon Valley. This is where all the action's happening in the big data business, the ecosystem, the industry. Big data is evolving from a few years ago, just, just a short few years ago, from some technology enablement with Hadoop, unstructured data now exploding into a competitive landscape where the big money players like EMC, IBM, HP are all coming in hard, Intel with their own distributions and really advancing the innovation. This is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events, you extract the ceiling from the noise. Again, this is our fourth Strata Conference. Go to siliconangle.com for all the reference point of innovation and wikibon.org for research where they just researched it, put out their second annual market sizing report. Go to wikibon.org slash big data and you'll see all the resources that we are publishing for free. Go enjoy the content. I'm John Furrier, the founder of siliconangle.com and I'm joined with my co-host today. Hi everybody, I'm Dave Vellante of wikibon.org and I appreciate you watching. Thanks for being part of our audience. You can tweet us, I'm at D Vellante, he's at Furrier. So Please do that, and uh, we appreciate the questions. We're here right now with Josh Klar, who's the Vice President of Products at uh, Greenplum, Greenplum, which is an EMC company. Josh, welcome to theCUBE. Thanks. You guys, big Great announcement on, uh, on Monday. Uh, I remember now a couple years ago at EMC World, John and I were there with our, with our team, we had theCUBE, and you guys actually made the first announcement of you know, one of your earlier partnerships uh, with MapR, the, and, and really declared that you were going to get in the game. Now since then, you've really started to step up the investments and, and Monday's announcement you know, really underscored that. So first of all, congratulations. Uh, I wasn't there, but John and Jeff were there. We heard you know, some great things, fantastic marketing. You got some good, good press out of it, so congratulations on that. And uh, how do you feel? Oh, really excited. Uh, as I said at the, at the press launch, it's actually, I think, the most exciting press uh, product launch I've been a part of. Um, the, what we've done with Pivotal HD is essentially we've taken I think 10 plus years of parallel database development and we've brought that into the Hadoop ecosystem. Uh, so it was really, the, the launch for me was exciting not because of the, kind of the, the event and all of the press, but really to be able to go up there and demo a product that works at scale on really large amounts of data. And essentially the theme is, is me bringing SQL to Hadoop, um, which is something that we started to hear about last year. Uh, you guys, wait a little bit for your announcement. You wanted to come out presumably with something that had a little bit more meat on the bone. Um, yeah. Talk about that a little bit and how you position uh, relative to some of the other guys out there. Yeah, well we've certainly been watching the, the evolution of the SQL on Hadoop marketplace. In the, in the background, uh, we've actually been working on this, this project for over a year and a half of bringing the parallel database technology into Hadoop. And like you said, uh, we wanted to wait until we had something big and material to announce uh, before we came out with it. Uh, but we're really excited about it for a few reasons. Um, one is really, it takes a, a long time to build a scalable query optimizer that can actually handle hundreds or thousands of data nodes uh, that you can talk SQL to and it can actually handle the complexity of the interactions with, with the data. Uh, and so I think that's an area where we've really differentiated is we're bringing in uh, 10 plus years of development on these scale, scalable query processing systems where the Hadoop ecosystem has started to bring database management technologies into Hadoop, but they're really just kind of be beginning that journey. Uh, so we think we bring to bear a lot of uh, technological uh, capabilities that just aren't there in the market today. Uh, Josh, we've been covering the business, this marketplace since the beginning, um, going back to the original Hadoop world, now Hadoop Summit, and just recently at the last Hadoop Summit that uh, Hortonworks puts on with uh, Yahoo, they talked about crossing the chasm, and that was a big theme where, you know, crossing the chasm is a book written uh, that talks about evolution of markets and how you cross that chasm and then you hit mainstream. So, you know, yep. with EMC's announcement, really that underscores, uh, at least you guys were presenting, it underscores essentially the evolution of EMC and Pivotal HD has green plum, it's got Pivotal software, see to some other acquisitions you, you guys have done within uh, VMware that's spinning out into its own company. So there's a future plan there. Uh, you guys are kind of light on details, but that speaks to kind of a, the, the future market. So you know, the market's crossing the chasm. You guys have a direction, not yet announced with, with this spin out. Um, so the, the, and, and the announcement, the big news was aggressive stance against uh, Hive and uh, Impala Cloudera. So, so I want to ask you, and everyone wants to know, um, why the aggressiveness? Um, obviously EMC is a big money player. You yep. don't, it's not like you don't have any customers. You have a lot of customers in the enterprise. Um, so two, 
this future direction, this new marketplace of big data that crossing the chasm. Talk about that dynamic, and then talk about uh, the aggressiveness of the announcement, and, and, and okay. why the stake in the ground is so hard. Yeah, and I guess you know, I, I kind of view it a little bit differently, which is, uh, the intent was not to be a aggressive, it was really to look at what is the state of the art in terms of SQL querying on Hadoop today? And I think Hive, Hive is that, uh, especially for how do you enable data workers and folks that are able to talk SQL to write large batch jobs that scale and run on Hadoop. Uh, and it's a, it's a great tool for that stuff. So the intent was not to say, uh, we're going to replace Hive, is that there, there are some things that Hive well, does you, well. But you guys were pointing out some benchmarks, which is basically exactly. saying, hey, there's Hive and it's not performing well, and here's Impala, and, and here's some of the benchmarks. And what we see today is Hive is really good at solving some problems, but when our customers, and I, th I don't think anybody would dispute this, and I don't think the folks at, at Cloudera uh, would dispute this, when you try to use Hive to do interactive analysis, it's just not good at it. So the intent was to show, here's a series of use cases where you need interactive analysis, and here's how it compares to what what's in the market today. So it, was, it wasn't intended to be a knock, it was intended to be, here's how you can uh, it, was an it was an exclamation point. It certainly was an exclamation point. Well, you're point. trying to differentiate, and this sort of back to my original question is, how do you guys differentiate? So, so you've got Hive, and that's really sort of Impala, and Hortonworks as well. Yep. Um, what about Hadapt? So they're, they're really sort of pushing more closer to SQL. Yeah. Um, are you saying that they're not as uh, relevant to the interactive an analytics piece, or is there, what's the nuance there with regard to Hadapt, if I could ask it that way? So I, I won't pretend to be an expert on kind of the, the inner workings of Hadapt. I actually think the Hadapt architecture is probably the most similar to the approach that we've taken, mm -hmm. which is let's embed a database engine on each of the nodes that sits in your Hadoop cluster, and let's create a federated query environment where you can go and kind of scale out those database engines in your Hadoop cluster. Uh, I just think we're farther down the line of solving the problems that you encounter when you need to start moving data back and forth between those query processing nodes. Why, because your database is more mature? Yes. Okay, so um, is that a two-sided coin, right? You've got the maturity of mm -hmm. the database, but at the same time, Hadap's been around for now a year, a year and a half, so they've got the, the modern mojo going. Yeah. Is that a trade-off, or is 11 years just an infant in the database world? Um, I think 11 years is not an, an infant. Uh, or it's, maybe I should say an adolescent. <laughs> <laughs> maybe an adolescent. Um, and I, th I think there are certainly some benefits from starting and trying to solve architectural problems from scratch. Mm -hmm. uh, if you actually look at some of the challenges we've had with the Greenplum database that we are running into, uh, it tends to do with scalability of storage. So we do well with hundreds of nodes, or, uh, but when we get to thousands of nodes, the storage scalability of the traditional Greenplum database, we started to have challenges. And so that's really where HDFS comes in and solves a big problem for us. So pretty much, I mean, things like user-defined queries, which you didn't get out of the box with Impala, and I don't know if you do now. I mean, obviously, you get that with yes. Greenplum. I mean, it's pretty, yes. pretty fundamental. What, but people really don't use NoSQL because they want to. They kind of use it because they, they have to. Do you see that changing with announcements like yours? I think NoSQL solves particular problems really well. So, and um, it's really, our approach is to try to figure out what are the business problems out there that haven't been solved that customers are asking us for. So if you look at the NoSQL movement, if you want key value stores, if you have programmers who are building scalable web applications that need access to those uh, elements really quickly, I think NoSQL actually is a, it's, uh, it's a great solution. Mm -hmm. But the target for what we've launched with Pivotal HD and Hawk are the data worker communities. So it's business intelligence, it's analysts, it's data scientists who are kind of struggling with data access on top of Hadoop. So do you think that the guys, you came from a, a BI background, yep. right? You were inside of Yahoo, really um, providing a service to the organization with a lot of traditional BI tools, right? Yes. Um, do you <laughs> think that this announcement, or announcements like yours will get the traditional BI guys sort of off the mark, I feel like they've been sitting on their hands a little bit saying, all right, well, maybe they're crossing their arms, let's see what happens with this Hadoop movement. Is that, first of all, a fair characterization? And, and secondly, do you think this will sort of entice them to dive in? So I, I think the BI vendors uh, certainly have recognized the kind of the rapid adoption of Hadoop. And if you look at <coughs> all of the players, they've built adapters, so they've built connections to Hive, um, and they're, they're trying to get into the game. But I think they've struggled because BI by its nature is interactive. And there really isn't a nice interactive platform on top of Hadoop. I think this, this enables you to start bringing the, kind of the requirements of the business intelligence ecosystem 
uh, which is interactive query and really robust SQL support, it allows you to bring that into the SQL platform, or the so, Hadoop platform. So one of the things right now that's obvious, we talked to Bill Schmarzo, the dean of big data, one of our friends in theCUBE uh, yesterday, and we also talked about- next call I give mine at Yahoo. Was, oh yeah, we yeah. have big, big fans of Bill. Uh, but we, point, we had an uh, interesting discussion around the data warehousing business, and again, back to crossing the chasm. Um, you know, the model's changing. People are going to move from specific use case purpose-built queries that may work better with SQL, and it's one, only one dimension of the market. So you're bolting on Hadoop into data warehousing to create a kind of a lower cost data warehouse and then provide really fast response time to, to queries. Um, so that's great. So that addresses a great marketplace you guys are attacking. What specific strategy do you guys have to move into the market where you want to bring new use cases in there, where you have to transform data across resources? Um, are you bolting on HD on top of HDFS across all those resources? Because that's one thing that Impala has that's interesting is that as data moves across the network, you can get those new use cases. So for the new questions, the new answers yep. um, that aren't yet evolving, that seems to be a more of a data platform approach versus a straight data warehousing. Yeah, and I think the way I view it is uh, we're expanding the number of use cases that can be done on top of Hadoop. So with Pivotal HD, all of the use cases that I'd say Hadoop excels at and shines at today when it comes to batch processing and certain types, types of analyses um, and scaling to write MapReduce programs, uh, you can continue to do that on Pivotal HD. But what we've seen with real customer implementations is those big Hadoop clusters are 10 to 20% utilized. We actually saw this at Yahoo, that we had you know, this huge valuable data asset, but the ability to bring computational services on top of uh, Hadoop, it, 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 they weren't there. So we've just, I think, added a new use case that you can do in this environment in a seamless way. We're not saying use Hadoop for your data warehouse and not other stuff. It's really just expand the use case. Got it, so we're getting, we're getting the time here because we're uh, behind schedule because of the keynotes. My final question for you is, I want you to talk to the folks out there because obviously you guys made a big splash in, uh, in typical EMC fashion. Um, you have a lot of customers, so it's not like you're making this stuff as you go along. You had a lot of engineering went into this announcement. Um, there's a lot of people in the community want to know that know you know what what the, what the strategy is. A lot of naysayers out there, kind of like you know you know him and hiring around EMC, making a lot of noise and claims, et cetera. So what do you want to say to those folks out there around EMC's approach and the community uh, and the business strategy around this announcement? Yeah, I'd say in general. I don't, I'm not sure what all of the naysayers are saying, uh, but our approach really is, we're trying to solve customer problems. When we go into these, the enterprises that we deal with, we listen to what they have to say, and we're trying to bring software uh, into their, into their inter operations that solve their problems. We think Hadoop is a critical part of that, uh, and we want to participate in the Hadoop ecosystem. Uh, you, you, know, you foreshadowed a little bit some of the stuff around uh, the Pivotal Initiative. Our plan is, to, uh, is that we will be active contributors into the Hadoop ecosystem, but we also think there are some compelling strategic differentiators that we have to offer, uh, and we want to you know, bring that as a, as a full package into our customers. Uh, so I think you'll see a continued investment in Hadoop, a continued investment in our SQL services and other differentiating services on top of that platform, uh, and we want to, we actually, you know, we want to, at the end of the day, give our customers something that solves their problems. So just quickly to follow up on that, just address the point to folks out there to help them understand, uh, the word proprietary has been kicked around, um, oh, be proprietary, uh, you know, stuff, and obviously there's some proprietary IP that you guys have, yep. um, and where that sits, I mean, we're calling it open source plus. Uh, some are saying it's proprietary and open source will always win over proprietary. Just quickly comment on, on that view, and try to give us a tease into what the roadmap might look for you guys as you extend out the functionality. Yeah, so I, w I mean, I would, I don't think I personally don't believe proprietary is a good thing or a bad thing, or open source software is a good thing or a bad thing to the customer, right? What they want to, are, are things that solve their problems. Um, and so, I don't want to get caught up in proprietary. Everybody, I think, in this space that is a profit-oriented vendor is trying to create some proprietary offering. It may be software, it may be services, but they're, what they're trying to do is land grab. Is, is provide you know provide software that solves problems and get paid a fair price for it. Well, and it's competitive marketplace. As we pointed out in our news segment yesterday, it's very competitive right now. And Pat Gelsinger said on the Cube two three years ago, Dave, that you know they are entering the market to win. When he was at EMC, now he's the CEO of uh, VMware, and obviously it's it's notable that Paul Moritz is in, involved yes. in this new initiative. So it's not like you know you guys are like nipping at the heels of, of the marketplace. You have real team, and you have big customers, so you know, winning uh, is, is a definition. He, he, he also said there, there will be no uh, red hat of a dupe. 
Yeah. So now well, we'll, we're going to hear from Hortonworks uh, in the next <laughs> segment or the two segments uh, from now. We're going to hear from Hadoop, another startup. But this is a really interesting opportunity for the marketplace. SQL on Hadoop. Is it Hadoop in SQL? Is it cheap data warehousing? Is it going to evolve into a, a, enabled business intelligence? Um, that's still to be determined. We believe that the business intelligence market is, is underserved right now. Yep. I think that's a good approach for Greenplum. And where you guys go from here, we'll be watching. So uh, uh, you know, guys made some bold moves. Uh, great product announcement. A lot, a lot of sizzle. And uh, we're going to be uh, we're going to be chewing on the steak, as they say, Dave, with sizzle on the steak with the EMC announcement. Right. So thanks for coming on the cube. We appreciate it. Be right back with our next guest after this short break. This is EMC Greenplum inside the cube, talking about their pivotal HD announcement and uh, talking about all this, the future opportunities around it. And we'll be right back with our next guest. We looked at all the programs out there and identified a gap in tech news coverage. There are plenty of tech shows that provide new gadgets and talk about the latest in gaming, but those shows are just the tip of the iceberg and we're here for the deep dive. There's a difference between technology consumers and those who live the business day to day. And our viewers recognize that. The market begged for a program to fill that void. We're not just touting off headlines. Our goal is to provide you with a story, but we also want to analyze the big picture and ask the questions that no one else is asking. Our guests aren't just here to provide commentary. We work with analysts who know the industry from the inside out. The tech business isn't new, but many networks treat it as if it is, and really barely scratch the surface on technology coverage. We follow the expansion of the cloud and the evolution of big data. We're covering new enterprise from startup to IPO and every move in between. So what do you think was the source of this misinformation? And so you mentioned briefly, uh, there are several other... If that's the case, then why does the world need another software as a service player? I like to think of us as a companion to theCUBE. We're here every morning trying to extract the signal from the noise. Where the Cube excels in event coverage, we're working to bring that experience to you consistently every morning. We use the top stories of the day to provide you with breaking announcements.